The term mass formation psychosis trended over the weekend with so many searches it broke the internet. When people went to search for the term on Google, a couple of strange things happened. Some people saw this odd disclaimer from Google saying the results were changing quickly and that it would take time for results to be added by reliable sources. What does this even mean? I thought when you Googled something, it would bring up sites relating to the topic. Why would Google need time to add results by quote unquote reliable sources? I want to have a thoughtful conversation about the idea of mass formation psychosis, which has become a rallying cry for people on the right and has been totally dismissed by people on the left. What you have to understand, first of all, is that the concept of mass formation itself has been around forever. It's not a new term. In short, mass formation is just a psychological process that, that leads people in the face of free-floating anxiety and despair to group together. Essentially what happens is if there's something that you are fighting, let's just say poverty, right? It's a it's a sort of an abstract thing. I'm, I'm not doing well. I'm disempowered. I, I'm distressed. The first thing you want to do in that situation is group together with your community, right? You're stronger together. And that's our natural kind of psychological process is to over-align with a group. And then we want to figure out specifically what's the problem. Why are we impoverished? We don't like the idea that it's just we're not doing well right now. We want to blame it on a person or a thing. We want to objectify that. And we want some kind of clear resolution. We want clarity about how we're going to get out of this, this poverty. That's the mechanism of mass formation. The problem is it often leads us to make really bad decisions as a society. So think about Think about Hitler, for example, or any, any horrible dictator you can think of. It all sort of stems from this place of despair. We're in despair, and, and we tr we're trying to figure out, well, what's the problem? And that dictator typically says that group or that thing is the problem. Let's fight against them. So we've objectified the enemy, and we know exactly who or what is going to get us out of it. Sadly, it's not always the right thing, right? We always, sometimes we can make a bad decision because there's not a lot of space for, for debate in that crowd. The crowd over aligns with the belief system and just follows the leader. So that's the basic concept of mass formation. And I would tell you that there's not a lot of debate about that. I haven't heard anybody challenge the construct itself. Now, go back to January of 2022, this year, Dr. Robert Malone, who was one of the, of the physicians that was involved in the development of the platform for the mRNA vaccine. He goes on the Joe Rogan Experience, the most popular podcast in the world, and he talks about mass formation psychosis. He adds the word psychosis. And he talks about it in reference to COVID-19. He essentially says, look, what happened was you had this abstract enemy COVID that created free-floating anxiety. And our populace grouped together against COVID, against the right, against Trump, and over-aligned. We, we threw all of our eggs in the WHO, CDC, and Fauci basket, essentially to the extent that it was psychotic. We were so turned off to new research, so turned off to logic that we were, that we were displaying psychosis. And then he explains that the theory is supported by Matthias Desmond, a psychology professor at the University of Ghent in Belgium, who has apparently done a tremendous amount of research on the topic, enough to have written his own book. So I hear this and I think, well, the use of the term psychosis is totally inappropriate. I think that Matthias Desmond is misusing the term, and I think that Dr. Malone is misusing the term. So I made a YouTube video saying, essentially, they're both nuts. And so psychologically, we don't like the fact that there's any ambiguity. We want to know exactly how we should act. And I think that Dr. Desmond is right about this. I want to know that the vaccine's going to work, so I am fully aligned in any piece of data that tells me the vaccine's going to work. And I am less likely to look at data that says the vaccine's not going to work. That's distressing for me because that's my solution right? That makes perfect sense. Where Dr. Desmond and Dr. Malone lose me is, is labeling that psychosis, implying that, and, and in Malone's own words, implying that we are in some kind of hypnotic trance, that we have lost touch with reality. That's a miss. A lot of people were really unhappy with my, my initial reaction to criticize. So I reached out to Matthias Desmond. I said, hey, would you be willing to sit for a podcast? And I thought he's going to sit on this podcast and I am going to light him up for misusing this term. He says, sure thing, and he sends me his book, The Psychology of Totalitarianism. And that's when everything changed. First, the guy is an intellectual badass. So not only is he a professor of psychology at the University of Ghent, he's also a professor of statistics who has done a tremendous amount of work looking at how we measure things 
abstract things, things that don't always have a clear answer. For example, how we measure treatment outcomes in therapy. In addition to his work as a professor, he's a full-fledged psychoanalytic psychotherapist, which is super rare. That is, like, if you, if you know anything about the world of, of therapy, there's different theoretical orientations. Psychoanalysis is the one that requires the most training. It takes years and years to get enough hours to get labeled a psychoanalytic psychotherapist. So he is a practicing clinician. He's also a very successful researcher and a very successful professor. So he wrote this book, The Psychology of Totalitarianism, not to polarize, not to say one side is wrong or one side is right. His goal was to help us, the, the reader, understand how when we were faced with a, a free-floating anxiety caused by COVID, how we stopped having good conversations, we stopped analyzing the data, and we just retreated to these sides. That was the point. The point was that when we retreat to these sides, we put ourselves, we become vulnerable to buying into a totalitarian government. That's the purpose of the book. And I thought he did a fantastic job outlining that process using psychological principles. That's the problem with mass formation, that it represents uh, an example of a too extreme uh, collectivism, which in the end, in the end, mm -hmm. the masses typically do not permit any individuality anymore deviating from the, from the group norm. That's extremely typical for mass formation. But there are two things absent from this book. The first is the term psychosis is nowhere to be found. I asked Matthias about it. He said, look, I never said it. I never wrote it down. It, apparently, Dr. Malone had misinterpreted a YouTube video that he heard and, and attributed that term to Matthias Desmond. Matthias had to ask Dr. Malone to stop using the term. And Dr. Malone said, okay, I'm so sorry. It was a mistake. That's the first thing. The second thing is Matthias Desmond does not believe that, that our governments, whether it's the U.S. government or any government in Europe, he does not believe that these governments are purposely distorting the anxiety of the populations to take control. He thinks it's happening, but there's no malicious intent, which is distinct from how we talk about mass formation traditionally. Traditionally, we're talking about when we're thinking about a Hitler or a Lenin, right? We're thinking about these dictators that are capitalizing on their population's anxiety. He does not think that's the mechanism. What he thinks happens is our population is scared and we want to be supported. We want the government to provide the support in the government well-meaning, wants to take, take care of its population. I think that's a really important distinction. So to me, it's clear that this is a much more nuanced topic than we are allowing it to be, right? We're not having conversations. I, I talked to Desmond about this idea, and he goes, look, it is to, to prevent mass formation from happening, we have to be willing to listen to each other, and we have to be willing to talk. We have to be willing to share what we think. What is so dangerous from a psychological standpoint is we get scared, we group up, and it becomes more important to us to be accepted by our group than it is for us to think freely. That's the challenge for everybody, is think freely. Anyway, I, I really recommend Matthias's book. It's called The Psychology of Totalitarianism. And if you want to hear my conversation with him, I'll link it here. Or you can get my actual podcast called Psyched, P-S-Y-C-H, apostrophe D, anywhere where uh, you get your podcast, Apple, Google, whatever. Thank you so much for listening. Please leave your comments below. Thank you.